Howdy folks. Today we're going to talk about why a little Rossi Model 92 and a 44 Magnum might just be the best bang for the buck when it comes to a camp home defense rifle and uh, even a hunting rifle. If you want to learn more, stay tuned. Howdy folks, the 44 Magnum was adopted in 1955, so it has some tenure, it's got some mileage under its belt now, and it has been able to prove itself through many, many, many different tests. Um, it is a great handgun cartridge, but it is also a great rifle cartridge. Especially in a, uh, in a fast action uh, rifle such as the Model 92 Winchester, in this case a Rossi Model 92. Um, at about 50 meters, um, it'll shoot clean through most North American game. Right through. I mean, we're talking about smashing through, you know, muscle tendons, smashing shoulder joints. It'll just pass right through. It's, it's a great little cartridge and it doesn't recoil all that badly. Um, there's a suite of bullet weights that you can get for the caliber between about 180 up to about 350 grains in weight. And uh, it can deliver about a half ton of energy uh, to anything within 50 meters. So that is, uh, those are some stats that are, that are worth taking into consideration so far as what you might consider for a kind of a FAMP, um, kind of a camp family gun. Uh, so if you're out camping with the family, the kids are out sitting around the campfire, got some lunch cooking or something like that, and a black bear walks into your camp. It's something that you could consider using as a personal defense weapon against that particular predaceous animal that's looking at your kids and conceivably save somebody's life with it. It, it is appropriate for that purpose. A great camp gun, great family protection uh, caliber and rifle. And uh, truth of the matter is, it's also a great training rifle, great training caliber, because you can you can load it to whatever you want, whether it's gallery loads or some serious uh, blood and guts. Um, we're going to shoot some 300 grain jacketed bullets through it today. These things are running at about um, 1,350 feet per second. It is a pretty hot load, and uh, that equates to about 1,214 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which is pretty pretty impressive. Now, I did some a little bit of homework before I came out here, and uh, you know, I'm going to bang some steel and so on. A little bit of homework because I wanted to be able to give you guys some vital stats. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to do your own homework, and you're going to see what the uh, kind of the different statistics you can get from different bullet weights, running out of a small little handy carbine like this Model 92 here in 44 Magnum. Um, why would you want to run something like this and say in comparison to an SKS with a 123 grain bullet? Or maybe even a 223? Well, it's, it's the same difference as why I will use a 12 gauge shotgun with slugs for bear defense over a 303 British. It has to do with 
frontal energy. And by frontal energy, that's what I'm talking about. What basically is the transferring of energy to the animal. Smaller, faster projectiles do have a tendency to deliver really good energy, but they also have a tendency to go straight through. And uh, there is a uh, there is a formula for when it comes to killing power. What is needed um, when you have something heavy with sharp teeth coming at you at, at a high rate of speed? You want knockdown killing power, knockdown power, stopping power, right? So a wide bullet with good frontage. Um, Traveling at a at a decent velocity has good stopping power in relation to a small diameter bullet going extremely fast. Now the late and great Elmer Keith, who invented the the Keith bullet um, advocated hunting calibers no less than 33 caliber or 0.33 inch bullets and um, um, he advocated bullets that weighed no less than 250 grains that's pretty 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 astute pretty pretty convincing formulations that he recommended um, he, he was a real believer in, in heavy bullets going slow now why would he what would be he be a big advocate for that? It worked for him. He was a serious hunter, and it worked very well for him, and it will work very well for you. There is a, um, a bit of a problem with some of those calibers when it comes to recoil. I think we all know and understand that, but it worked for him. Um, the theory is, is that the longer it takes for a projectile to pass through an animal, or a moose, or a deer, or whatever it is that you're shooting at, um, the longer it takes for that projectile to enter and exit that animal, the more shock effect the uh, the animal's nervous system will absorb, and that has a big big impact so far as how quickly an animal will die. Now, what what delivers more energy? A small, fast moving projectile that passes through a deer and keeps on going. It delivers good hydrostatic shock and is designed to um, deliver the liquid, liquid to liquefy uh, vascular tissue, internal organs, and kill the animal very, very quickly in, in that regards. But you will see some animals when they're hit with those small, fast projectiles, they look like they'll just jump and they'll, they'll, they'll run for 100, 150 yards before they drop. Now, with a large diameter projectile, in this case, I think it's a, a a 0 0.430 inch diameter bullet or a 429 inch diameter bullet um, a slow big bullet that 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 barely penetrates through the animal or doesn't entirely penetrate it actually stays in the animal which one do you think delivers more stopping energy frontal force is it the one that passes through or the one that actually embeds itself in the animal and that animal fully absorbs 100% of the energy in that in that projectile. So, what I, essentially what I'm trying to tell you is that don't discount a small pistol caliber in a rifle like this um, with a large bullet diameter and large frontal area uh, when it comes to um, hunting or for camp defense. Um, a bigger hole pushed through the uh, the animal will do more damage. To, to, a, to much of the tissue, the meat, the bone crunching power that you need to stop it. Bit of a slippery slope. And really honestly, there isn't much more of a, there's really no more than a 25 meter shot, maybe a 35 meter shot here in these conditions. In which case, I'm perfectly happy with a 44 Magnum.
when you need a hand free because uh, you need to grab on a stuff to support yourself like this is slippery here then uh, something lightweight like this you can hold in one hand only weighs about five pounds unloaded and let's say for example compare that to an SKS eight and a half pounds unloaded if your 12 year old needs to shoot a bear because it's coming to camp or a 15 year old three and a half pounds three and a half pounds might be all it takes for him to hit or miss So seriously, I would, I would uh, rate very, very highly the rate of fire, the amount of energy you're delivering to target at close ranges with a uh, little Model 92 uh, like this one here in 44 Magnum. You're, uh, you're delivering lots of really good energy at close ranges in a very, very light, easy to manipulate rifle and a caliber that's going to do the job. Light gallery load on log. Okay, so bullet went in right there. And it came out right there. Don't ask me to try to find it. That was a light gallery load. This is like uh, 44 special kind of power. Well, the camera is certainly getting wet. So that was a, uh, a light gallery load that I just put through that log. This thing is moving pretty slow. It's a 240 grain, a mild, it's not even a hard cast bullet. I probably should be running hard cast bullets through this one for the gallery loads, but uh, just to keep letting down. But it went straight through. That's a, about a, a eight inch log. Um, went straight through, piece of spruce and a uh, fair amount of fragments on the other side. And it's a light gallery load, 240 grain, but that mass, it's, uh, it's pushing through, which I'm surprised. Um, probably a nine mill millimeter would go through, but uh, uh, we'll see whether or not the, the log actually moved once, when it was shot with that bullet. But uh, what a great rifle, great caliber. Next time I better remember to put my hearing protection on. So, hope you enjoyed the video, folks. If you're out hunting in bush like this and uh, you don't have a lot of long shots, you want something really handy, easy to manipulate, move around, grab it with one hand, only weighs about five pounds, you should seriously consider something like this rifle here in this chambering. Um, anything steps out within 100 meters, it's in real trouble. Sights are great on it, and the caliber is more than capable. Well, hope, hope you got something out of that, and as always, folks, keep your stick on the ice, and as always, maple leaf up.